Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships. Today I am going to look at this which I've just unlocked, the tier 5 French destroyer Le Droit, which I'm probably saying slightly wrong. I'm sure it's actually pronounced Le Adroit. There you go, French viewers. <laughs> Have that one. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be more torpedo focused. The whole line is more torpedo focused, which kind of makes sense because, of course, the original French line is very much around, around just going fast and pew pewing at a sort of medium to long range, with occasional bursts of of uh, quicker fire. There is, however, uh, some commonality in that this also doesn't get a smoke. It's only got a short burst speed boost. So that's going to be a little interesting to play around. It's not, of course, the only uh, destroyer in the game that is more torpedo focused but doesn't have smoke. But I think it's the first time we've had a line of them. I don't think there's any others that are quite like that. There's some that sort of arguably are, I suppose. The uh, the European destroyers, uh, the original European destroyer branch, but um, they have very weak torpedoes and uh, of course they have a heel and this doesn't, so it is definitely not going to be the same as those. Uh, these are quite weak torpedoes though, having said that, pointed out the weak torpedoes. Yeah, these are not great. Eight kilometers is a decent range for tier five, but um, that damage is not fantastic. And it's almost a 90 second reload as well for not high damage. So I think once I get more captain skills, we'll be investing into some of these top reload skills and uh, making them a bit faster and reload a bit quicker. Because, uh, yeah, that's it, it's not like you're not going to be... <laughs> You're not going to be one hitting anybody with those unless they have not a lot of health or uh, they're like another destroyer or something like that. I also have a confession before I hit the battle button. Uh, I did something bad, you guys. I did something bad. You might have noticed the background. Yeah, they've got one of the many concurrent events they have going at the moment, for goodness sake. Um, we have, what, four? I think, yeah, so we've got the French Early Access, uh, we've got Star Trek, we've got the Independence Day stuff for the US, we've ha just had the football thing going, uh, and actually, technically, uh, five, because there's also the uh, Popeye thing as well. Um, it's sort of an event in that you can grind and get one of the captains by completing a chain of missions uh, but you can also just buy the captains and a skin for the Colorado if you want it's not the first time we've had these in so yeah technically five things at the moment but the um the bad thing I did was this I <laughs> apparently all it took was wargaming doing a Star Trek thing and that just made me immediately throw my credit card at the screen so I have all four of the skins, I've got the captains, and um, I'm kind of unapologetic about it because I kind of love them, honestly. <laughs> the skins are great. Uh, the captains, however, they are supposed to be voiced, and they are voiced, but they've gotten some sound-alikes to do the lines, and the sound-alikes don't sound very alike, to be honest. I think the closest one is probably the guy they got to do uh, Spock, but otherwise, yeah, they really don't sound particularly fantastic. You can actually get a little preview here in the uh, the shop screen. Mad. Set up the smoke concealment. I will not be a part of it. I will not be a part of it. Copy that. Yeah, that really does not sound at all like Jean-Luc Picard, but you can know. <laughs> At least they've paid a person to do an impression rather than using some kind of AI fuckery, but who knows. Anyway. I can characterize it as well done execution. We will show them our capabilities. See, that's not terrible. It's 
Still obviously not Spock, but not terrible. I need fire support. No, just no. Those who own information own the world. That does not sound anything like Denise Crosby. And then lastly we have... Regroup! White-livered squid! Set a smoke screen! Requesting fire support! Your deeds will not be forgotten. Yeah, it's a sort of generic Klingon. It's not anything like Gowron, so... Yeah, no, um, I don't think I've, I'm, I'm desperate to use any of the captains. The captains just happened to come with the skins. Uh, and it's just that I think the skins look fantastic. Although having said that, the one I like the best, the, um, the Enterprise skin, it's on the USS Enterprise, the, 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 uh, the, the CV. Uh, I'm probably not going to use this outside of, um, uh, operations very much but I just I really like what they've done with this uh, I think they've done a, a pretty good job and my only minor gripe with any of these is that um, the torpedoes and the uh, the gun trails are just standard looking torpedoes and gun trails in fact the torpedoes just sound like standard torpedoes they don't sound like photon torpedoes, which they really should. That was such a missed opportunity, making the launcher sound like you're firing photons. But uh, they don't, sadly. You do at least get a sort of laserish phaser sound with the um, uh, the, the guns, and uh, the secondaries have uh, different coloured flashes to them. But the actual trails are just completely standard gun trails. So I've slightly half-assed the effects but I do absolutely love these skins. Anyway, I was weak. I was weak, and that was the thing I did. So let's get into battle and see what we can do with this. Top tier matchmaking and no bots, which is quite nice. Um, quite a lot of destroys as well. So we'll have to be a little bit careful we don't have any kind of burst fire and the reload is not terrible but it's not fantastic it's nearly a six second reload on a destroyer uh, but it's at least you know it's the french 130 mil so they're, they're pretty decent guns um yeah it's it's interesting uh we'll, we'll see how we do but we don't have to worry about being air spotted at least there are some pretty decent destroyers at tier five I think tier 5 is a little bit overlooked uh, in terms of, well, it's chips generally, I suppose, but um, destroyers especially, there are some quite fun machines. You do, however, <laughs> if you're doing a, if you're playing a tier 5, always run the risk of running into some of the rather overpowered mid-tier beasts, the premiums that uh, do still work at this tier, so... Yeah, how this is going to stack up next to a, a, a kamikaze, for example, probably not that well. But uh, it's compared to its tech tree compatriots, you know, six kilometers is decent. Eight kilometers is a pretty good range for the tier, for the torpedoes. Uh, it's just the torpedo damage that feels really lacking. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Like the T-22 definitely outspots me. Uh, and I think the Ajay Slavs will. So yeah, I think the Nicholas is the only thing I can see coming. And then of course the other Le Joie will um, spot me at the same time that I spot them. I'm going to put some preemptive torpedoes out in this direction. They are radio located. I haven't spotted... Well, there we go, I haven't said that. Just as I was saying that. Uh, yeah. Also, that's my phone ringing. What excellent timing. Right, we've got more stuff spotted, uh, including a number of their destroyers, Nicholas and the Le Joie. Uh The deli up there, some stuff in the middle. Looks like the Jai Slavs are on the other flank. Uh, do I want to maybe go and poke at the Nicholas? They're in their smoke at the moment. Not having even a uh, short duration smoke for breaking line of sight, it's definitely a serious, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not setback. Uh, 
it's an issue. It's an issue. It's it's uh, gonna make life a lot trickier, especially if there's CVs or subs or things that might spot you in play. These ballistics seem not too bad. You're really just going for that Britannia, aren't you? Unfortunately, didn't make the killing. Oh well, actually no, he might make the killing blow with his a lot of torps out, but uh, done himself in the process. Okay. I mean, that's always an option <laughs> with uh, quite a few destroyers, but um, uh, I'm never really a fan of just giving one ship away to get a, a single kill like that, unless it's some completely critical point of the match, which occasionally it might be. Right, let's see if we can drop on this deli. There uh, goes our Clemson. The tops are reasonably fast. You can get them up to... Uh, I don't have the captain skill yet, as you saw, but you can get them up to, I think, like 71, 72 knots, something like that. You kind of need the speed. Right. Let's use our... Uh... Oh, looks like you're going to eat some of those. Speed boost out of range. Nice, all three hit. And somebody else got to kill. Uh, we do have a sneaky little Kuma in our base though, but not that sneaky. <laughs> They're spotted and uh, hopefully we'll get shot at. There's certainly plenty of battleships in range of that. Right, talking of battleships, maybe I'll have a go at this Bretagne. Let's see if we can get in range. I might actually be better off trying to drop torps on that Durflinger rather than the Britannia. The Britannia is kind of awkwardly near islands at the moment. And it's got to be the enemy Le Droit that's... Um... Is that kind of really just ignoring that Kuma? Uh, okay. Apparently so. Uh, <laughs> okay, if we get kept out by that Kuma, man, we're going to deserve it. What are our battleships? There's not anybody tried to reset that Kuma. Okay then, right. Well, um, anybody? Anybody? Little reset? Little reset? No? No? Oh, oh, <laughs> that was literally the last second. Good grief. It's not like the, I mean, the Kuma, okay, it's not like it's the most unstealthy ship in the world, but still. Uh, oh, right, they got some good hits there, unfortunately. All their guns were sort of pointed the right direction and mine weren't. Uh, get my own speed boost going. The fact that it's getting this close is <laughs> kind of ridiculous. I did get some torp hits into that uh, Durflinger though. Was it just the one? I think it was just the one. Yeah, this thing's not especially fast. Uh, oh, it's the T22. The T22's in the cap as well. Okay. That's why there's smoke in the cap. Well, if we lose this one, it's going to be because of a kind of a daft reason. Hopefully you've got Hydro Königsberg. That's me unspotted. I mean, T22's also got Hydro, though. Uh, our Königs just in a complete world of their own. They're just wandering up on that flank. And who cares about anything else that, that's happening? It doesn't really matter, right? Apparently not. Right, T22, you were trying to have a, a give everyone a very boring match, so for that you must be punished. <laughs> I actually got torpedoed. Nice. Okay. Um... 
<laughs> okay, this is this is a mess. This has devolved into an absolute mess. We do have a slight upper hand in terms of points and ships, at least. What if I'm better off with my AP shells? Against this fella. Ah, oh, he's turning now. 130 mils, there are definitely going to be times when the AP is more worth it. Right, the Ledroit is over there, so I'm going to try get torpedoes into things on this flank. That's where the points are. Maybe pop another speed boost to get a bit closer. They've actually got the um, boosted equipment thing that, um, it's like the default's 50 seconds for the uh, the short duration boost, but uh, as you can see that's now up to 65. So I've got a slightly higher duration, which I think is probably useful. Right, you're healing. So there's not an optimal angle for a torpedo drop. Uh, also, I don't have adrenaline rush. I just plopped in a 12 point captain on this, and um, adrenaline rush would definitely be a useful skill. Ideally, we want to get a flooding going. How are you doing, Omaha? I would be, if I was at Omaha, basically kiting away at this point. Uh, I don't either of those, it's kind of hard to tell. No. They changed their course a bit so they're not going to hit. So there goes the enemy Le Droit. So it's just these battleships and that cruiser left. So yeah, I think we're going to come out on top of this. I don't think there's any way we throw this away at this point. We'd have to try quite hard. So there goes the Omaha. I'm actually going to turn around here rather than Awkwardly sit facing towards the island. Uh, are they just going towards their cap now? Yes, they are. Oh, okay. Well, the uh, Severa is actually coming this way, so we can drop the torpedo that way. Well, now you're turning back towards the cap as well. Well, that's just not cricket. Might as well open fire. Might get some attention from the Severa. But I don't think my torpedoes are going to hit anything at this stage. Yeah, he's taking the bait. Ooh, nice citadel. And we're going, oh, maybe I shouldn't be broadside to the AP firing thing. Fair enough. Oh, well, this is literally just taking advantage of them being distracted. Not any particular grand tactical plays going on at the moment. Just see if we can get some fire and a bit more damage done. The turret traverse is not too bad actually. I mean, it, it it's not that snappy, but it's really not too bad. Yeah, fire would be nice about that. I don't even know often what the fire chance is. Ten percent. It's probably with flags. is really not awful for a destroyer. 
It looks like we're going to cap this one out. Oh well. <laughs> we could easily overwhelm these last two battleships. Kind of feels like we're leaving damage on the table, but uh, that's fine. I can't say we haven't decisively won this one. No kills for me. I almost got that... Uh, what was it? The deli. I almost got that deli, but I just didn't quite have the torpedo power. Because these are pretty weak torpedoes. Well, I guess someone got reset. So maybe we will get to kill them both after all. And there it goes. So that felt not terrible, 50k. Um, I contributed something, but it was a slightly messy match overall. On the other hand, low and mid-tier matches kind of usually are that, so... <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's give that another go. Let's see what kind of matchmaking we get. So this time, tier 7, this is kind of about as opposite as, as it can get, uh, tier 7, but it's still quite heavy with the tier 5s. Um, no CV. Domination. Submarines. Okay. Okay, so this is a bit tougher, but actually not as tough as it could be, being a tier 7 match. In fact, there's only two destroyers per side. Uh, and almost all of them are Lodroids, apart, uh, apart from this uh, T-22. I, I said it wrong definitely that time. <laughs> Lodroids. <laughs> anyway. You can't expect consistency, even if I get it right once, doesn't mean I'm going to get it right every time. And it's looking like the B-cap is uncontested, unless there is a submarine around here somewhere lurking. Uh, we'll see how this goes. This might give me an opportunity to get some torpedoes away, but I have to watch out for Takachi's torps because uh, uh, Takachi has, if I remember correctly, pretty decent torps. Yeah, 12 kilometers. It's nice that you can just do this and like see the the at least the you know the base characteristics you can't tell if somebody's um modded a particular aspect or not but just as a reminder for stuff like that like there's their sub it's close enough to be oh okay, Use a speed boost, they've dived. They were more worried about being seen by me, apparently. Nobody just happened to have their guns facing in this direction. It's awfully tempting to try and go over this, uh, go after this sub, but uh, almost certainly a completely terrible idea. Right, so that is the cat. Um, of course, by searching to spot me, they risk getting shot at themselves, so. That's fine. And I had a very brief window. It really is tempting to just charge in there and drop all the depth charges, but also a terribly bad idea. So that's got to be the T-22 that was A, if the, the Cachalot is there. Uh, it looks like the North might be a bit on the weak side. We might go and help out there, and then we can hopefully get a two-cap superiority going. Because at the moment, this cap is sort of slightly awkwardly, uh, yeah, vulnerable, unless we can secure one of the ends. There's the enemy Le Uh Congo's taking a beating. Cashlow, Takachi's kind of hanging around the middle. Let's try and help out with this destroyer a bit. The angles on the guns aren't 
like a fantastic. I mean, this is uh, my understanding is a slightly improved Burask class, and if you look at it next to the Burask, you can see they do have a very similar profile. Um, but it's the exact same armament as the Burask. 430 mil guns, so there is um, not much to choose between them in that regard. Right, yeah, this cash flow is probably going to try and cap B. A cap's not looking great, we've <laughs> just got three ships that are left there now. Um, let's see if we can drop on this Mitsu. It's also now a cat meowing in the background. Apparently this is just a day of background noise distractions. Although he probably can't be uh, picked up by the microphone. I've actually got three cats at the moment. So we've got Sam, obviously, his majesty. We've got Percy the foster cat. And I'm also now, uh, for this week, looking after my um, uh, stepbrother's cat, Lily. Who is actually, she's a pretty nice house guest as far as cats goes. She's um, quite content just to, yeah, it's just catchy tops. Quite content just to uh, curl up in my bedroom, claim it as her own space and just sleep there. Although she's quite funny. She's, she's generally an undemanding cat, apart from she obviously has very fixed ideas about when humans should go to bed. Because she normally sleeps in uh she, she uh sleeps in the bed with my uh my stepbrother and his wife and um uh, if i if i you know dare to go to bed later than she's accustomed to she starts basically getting very demanding she comes through and meows at me and basically tells me off for not going to bed which is just it amuses me every time because she's just so particular about it so, I don't know, she's just an old lady set in her ways, I guess. You must go to bed at this time, human, or else I will complain about it. And I won't stop complaining about it. She's not a big cat, but she's got a heck of a meow on her. So she rivals Percy, even though uh, he's a, a bigger boy cat. Although not that much bigger. He's not like a hulking great big tom cat or anything like that, but... Uh, yeah, they both get going at the time, uh, at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure my uh, my poor ears would be very happy. But she's not nearly as persistent as Percy is the thing. Anyway, so that is your irregularly scheduled cat update. <laughs> I was actually joking with my uh, uh, friends that um, like this is joke slash meme but you know the number of cats you should have if you're going to be a, a cat spinster is um is sort of your age but divided by 10 and you know rounded down so i'm currently temporarily uh, in my late uh, being in my late 30s you know three cats is the correct number of cats but uh it's going to get pretty soon where i'm going to need four cats for that number to be correct so uh yeah Clearly I'd better start looking. Anyway, I got a bit distracted talking about cats. We've gotten some kills. We've got these last two ships here boxed up, but we are kind of down on points and we are kind of down on ships, neither of which is especially fantastic. I'm kind of surprised the Cashlow hasn't made a play for the B cap. And I'm also kind of surprised that the Fuso and the Emerald are hanging on down there. Although, <coughs> with the Emerald, it might be thanks to having some smoke available. Um, so rather than... I don't know. It feels like I should be heading south at this point. Rather than going for these two ships here. But maybe I should be. I don't know. The West Virginia, uh, I mean, it can overmatch the October Revolution, but it, it uh, maybe depends a little bit on our uh, on RNG when it's that kind of engagement. And the Galicia looks like they're just making a run for it. Right, oh, they've finished off York as well. That's not so great. We might lose this one. We might lose this one. <clears throat> I 
Okay, there goes the Fuso. The uh, Tub of Revolution's gone. Uh, <laughs> there goes the Emerald. We're down to now four ships. I don't think we're going to win this one. Uh, oh, hello, Takachi. Oh, there's Takachi Torps. Uh, I was going to investigate the B Cat, but now there's Takachi to deal with. I don't quite have the rate of. Uh, yeah, this, this, the Torps aren't fast enough to squeeze past there, unfortunately. Hmm. This is not ideal. This is definitely not ideal. Maybe the cash flow, maybe the T-22. I guess we'll see. I'm a little tempted to use the speed boost now, but no, let's hold on to it till I definitely need it. Because it does not last that long. Well, whatever it is, it's still in the cap. I haven't seen it yet. Which means it's the opposite far edge from me. And I would go sniff it out, except there's a high health Omaha, like, right there. Okay, so they've dipped out the other side of the cap. Uh, there's the enemy deli. Oh, that's very tempting. Ah, jeez. Putting out torps. Oh, I have hit the brakes just a little too late there, unfortunately. I don't think I'm going to get a chance to get this cap. Certainly not now that I've inadvertently backed out, but I can certainly gun down this deli on 138 hit points. It's what happens to me after that that gets kind of tricky. Yeah, we're not going to... Uh, okay, let's just pew pew pew. Bye bye, Delhi. can at least get a kill out of this. Or rather, another kill. So there's the Leon, there's the Omaha. Uh, Leon! Well, it's a complete shotgun, so, you know. I might get spanked horribly, I might... Hello! <laughs> Oh, that's always very silly when that happens. I've got the Takachi firing from the other side as well. Uh, so that was the um, poor unfortunate T-22 ramming into one of my torpedoes. So there's a little bonus kill for me there. Uh, I think we can give you some AP shells, can't we, Takachi? Get my guns around. Uh, if I can get another kill out of this, that would be hilarious. But I don't know if I'm going to last long enough. Uh, no, I'm not going to last long enough. We are just getting bounces over pens, non-pens. Ah, oh, well. Right, that would have been lovely, but it's not happening. That bonus kill on the T-22 was very funny, though. So there's a little bit of comedy going on here as well with that cash flow running aground, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't enough to get them killed. I think... I think what cost us this was we just ended up with a bunch of ships trapped down here. They didn't have an escape plan. If, if they'd been able to fight their way back north, maybe. Retreat a bit. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Less damage that time, but three kills. Including one that was very unexpected. So, they just... I don't know. The enemy team just played better, I guess. Sometimes that happens. So, yeah, this is not bad uh, for a tier 5 destroyer, anyway, but uh, I've yet to, you know, I'm sure I'll have maybe different opinions if I get a string of games where there are CVs and planes buzzing all around the place and I'm not able to do really anything about it because the AA is terrible and it doesn't have a particularly good range, it doesn't have a consumable, I mean really your only move is to hope you've got a speed boost available and hit that and go fast and try and evade. So, <laughs> yeah, I think this thing with CVs in play is going to be a very different experience than uh, than I've just had in those last two games. 
Anyway, I will bring you more of these as I get them, which might not be until the actual line releases because I'm not that fussed about forking over doubloons for early access on a tech tree line. However, apparently I am more than happy to fork over uh, quite a lot of doubloons if it involves feeding my nerd interests. So uh, please don't watch this and take note Wargaming because, um, you know, if they release more, then I'm going to have to throw my card at the screen even more and um, feel probably a little guilty about doing it. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.